and excited today guys excited i am super happy i cannot believe it's october the 9th 2021 kbs youth day i am so happy um i'm so so glad there's so much in store for you guys thank you so much for for joining you know it's it really means a lot and i mean god is there as you know directed you to this space and this place so we really thank god for that and i will be your mc for today <laughs> guys i can i cannot hear anyone am i alone <laughs> good morning guys <laughs> ah yes i'm shaking it off man i'm so ready and so excited i just pray that everything goes as God has planned it to go. I pray it all goes well. I pray that you get something. We have amazing speakers. We have we have an amazing program for you all. So I hope you're ready and excited as I am. So a few housekeeping rules uh, before we begin. We have, um, you know, yes, we're on Zoom. So uh, we have the, you know, the mute button and unmute button. So please make sure you're on mute unless you are uh, you asked a question or unless yeah it's time to ask a question or yeah to give you your feedback there is that and also um yes when we ask you to uh turn on your camera please kindly please if you're able to we would love that uh, participation you know of everyone seeing everyone and all of us interacting and then yes so the theme of this this yes this kbs youth event is winning in relationships so i'd like i'd like you to just think first yeah before you go in what do you think winning in relationship is you know um um yeah what what is it and as as we go as we continue with the event uh, i mean you will get to learn and understand um um about relationship if it's foggy if, if some things like social media define it for you or you know all that so um yes so we'll have that and um so our our verse for the this is uh Actually, the theme, the theme verse for the year has been 1 Corinthians 9 uh, from 
from 1 Corinthians 9 from 24 to 27. And it says, yes, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we are imperishable. So do, do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beat in the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control. Least after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Yes? So it's just about winning. So we're learning how how we should begin, how we should run this race in relationship, yes? So without taking much time, <laughs> let me start uh, by saying our word of prayer. And yes, we can begin uh, and continue with our session. So um, let us pray. Our lovely, loving Heavenly Father, we come before you this very day. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to flow in us, through us, and around us, Holy Spirit, I ask that Holy Spirit, you may guide us in, even in this space, Lord, as we listen to your word, Lord, that we may see you, Lord God Almighty, not the speaker, but that we may hear you in hard decisions that we make as the youth uh, when it comes to relationship, Lord. I pray that today all those uh, all the, you know, foginess in the mind when it comes to that area, I pray that it may be cleared in the name of Jesus. I pray, I pray for a sense of clarity in the decisions we make, Holy Spirit. Even if we are in tough situations when it comes to relationship, I pray like that through this, um, through this, uh, the discussion today, I pray that we may know how what you would want from us and how you would want us to flow in spirit. Lord, we love you, we worship you, and we lift you up for there is no one like you in the heavens and in the earth. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 So um, right now, I want to welcome somebody very, very, she's known in this KBS space, <laughs> yeah, and her, her name is Kate Njao. Kate, is your camera on? Yes, I am oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> ready. <laughs> yeah, um, so yes, over to you. I pass the button to you and <laughs> you can take us through. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much, um, Joy. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, Karibuni Sana. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I know um, there are people now joining us from different places. I can see Aisha. I just want to shout out Aisha. Hi, Aisha. Thank you for joining us. Um, I can see Afeft Angie. We are so excited and honored to have you. So thank you, Afeft Angie, for joining us. Um, thank you, Chilande. I just want to shout out a couple of people. Thank you, Mary Nathalie. Thank you, um, Pauline and Matthew. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Josiah. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone, um, to everyone who has joined us. We are so excited. Um, yeah, and like Joy said, um, our theme for this event is winning in relationships. So relationships are such a big part of our lives. Um, you know, um, we were born, you know, because maybe our parents had a relationship. So, you know, we have a relationship with God. There's, there's just so much that you can say about relationships. And so before we begin, um, you know, I just like to sort of um, invite or welcome these two amazing people. Um, they're an amazing couple. We are so honored. Um, you know, that they accepted our invitation. So today we are doing things a little bit different. And so I'd like to welcome Eric and Sandra. They are going to introduce themselves. Um, and I'm so excited for this session. I hope um, you have a pen and a paper wherever you are. We hope that, you know, you're ex um, you have um, your expectant. Um, I hope, you know, that everything that you're, you know, you desire to learn, um, that, you know, you're going to learn from this space. And yeah, so welcome, um, Eric and Sandra, Karibuni Sana. Um, yeah, so kindly tell us who you are. Um, the floor is yours.
Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kate. It's such an amazing honor to be here. Um, and thank you for inviting us. Thank you for um, giving us the opportunity to share uh, and to be here. And, and thank you everyone for joining. It's, we are, we we're excited. We, at first we were scared, but then now we are excited. And we are really glad to be here um, with my wife, Sandra. So I would like Sandra, Sandra can introduce me because she's the person in the world who knows me the most. And I will do my best to introduce her. And then uh, we can take it from there. Sandra, tell us about your husband. Hi, everyone. Talk about being put on the hot seat. Hey, this is what is called Kitty Moto. I'm so excited to be here this morning with everyone. And uh, I'm glad that we are here to share and to learn from each other. So I have been given the task of introducing one Eric Mwangi. He is a child of God, first of all. Um, I think that's the most important um, part of him is that he's a child of God. And he he's also um, one of the few people who are fortunate to know why God put them on this earth, you know, in as far as him being able to share and to show God's creativity. So he's a creative. Um, and, and, and aside from that, God has also given him a task to steward. So he's a steward of three amazing children um, with whom we, we, we steward together. He's a brother, he's a son, um, both a physical son, but most, important, most importantly, a spiritual son of our spiritual father, Apeftanji. And he, he has a, a task um, on his hands that, that God has, has given him to just um, help the Solomon generation, who is you guys. So thank you so much for having us. And uh, please smile. Ooh, ooh. Josiah, do you want to put your camera out so we see your, your real smile? Smile and encourage us. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Sandra. Hey, I almost didn't recognize myself there, but thank you so much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, let me say something about this wonderful lady. She's called Sandra Mwangi, and uh, she's I've known her for many years. She's a wonderful, wonderful person. One of the most so she is a firstborn. Uh, she is a banker by profession. She's a mommy to three wonderful children that we have together. She loves gardening and traveling. Uh, she is a child of God. She's truly, she's one of the people who I can say without a doubt love Jesus with all their heart. And one thing I can say, you know, when, when we go to heaven, we'll be asked, how many people did you lead to Christ? And I can say, if it was not for Sandra, I would not have known God. She is the one who um, introduced me to the light everlasting. And for that, I will never be grateful. And it's been a wonderful journey, which we'll be sharing with our young people today. Uh, and it's a, 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 we're just excited to be here. Uh, just before we proceed, I just wanted to show some three pictures of where we started, our halfway and where we are now. So that at least um, for those who don't know us can at least see we didn't, we weren't always this shiny and presentable. <laughs> so let me just share. Um, there we go, just a sec. This is us. <laughs> what? Oh my God, I would never have. What? Yeah. <laughs> there is creative. I, you don't have of what? Okay, let me keep quiet. This, this is, yeah, this is us. Um, we were young and adventurous. We used to love traveling and um, it was fun. And uh, we thank God that. Uh, 
we could enjoy each other's company from from that time. Uh, so we can see the year that is 2008. And then this is our wedding in 2014, uh, which we can say was a serious transition for us in terms of our relationship. Um, and the main thing here being that we presented ourselves before God, you know, and we'll talk more about this, but this was a very important part of our journey. Uh, and you can see that we, 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 there's growth. Um, it's, it's not been perfect, but there's been growth. And then now this is how we are today. God has blessed us uh, with these wonderful children. This was our daughter's birthday last year. And I think you can see from those three pictures that a relationship is a journey. It's not something that you just have and pick and drop. It's something that takes time, but I can guarantee you it is worth the journey. And we hope by the time we are done today, you'll be able to have a different um, expectation of a relationship. And not just, uh, this not just a marriage relationship, but relationship as a whole in the way that God expected it. Because God is all about relationships. And that is what we will be talking about today. So I hope you're expectant. I hope you um, are ready. And, and, and we want you to be as engaging as possible, guys. Keep us encouraged, chat, ask us questions, and we'll be We'll do our best just to share from the heart and we hope that you are encouraged uh, and blessed. Thank you. Oh, wow. Ay, 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 <laughs> That one is for Shango and Vigele Gele. And before and after chemical for sure. What? Chemical. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> I but thank it. you so much for taking us through, um, you know, um, uh, just your journey. And just to for us to know you more, uh, we have like a short game. Um, so I don't know if you can see on your screen, Eric, you're on the left side and Sandra, you're on the right side. If we're, the way I'm looking at my screen. I don't know if it's the same for everyone. Is it the same for you, um, Eric and Sandra? Okay. Oh, is that the same? Oh, okay. So I'm going to ask you um, questions and then you say um, the person that, you know, is most likely to do that or who did it first or something of a sort. We are cool? Okay, so, so who is most likely to forget an important event? <laughs> You, Eric. Definitely Sandra. Sandra. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Okay. So who is most likely to forget um, their wallet or a pass at a shop? <clears throat> we have another winner, Sandra. <laughs> ah, okay. Sandra, since you're the forgetful one. <laughs> okay. Um, who said I love you first? Tell us. Ah, that was, that Eric, was, okay. Was. <laughs> That's nice. Um, who is most likely to fall asleep on a date? <laughs> asleep on? On a date. Another winner, Sandra. Oh, gosh. Ah! <laughs> it seems like Sandra is disputing. Sandra, is that true? Ah, hi, surely. She's on a date. She's winning in relationships. <laughs> Oh my goodness, guys. First of all, I <laughs> allow me to say that if the date is a movie, then maybe I'll sleep because, you know, I, I don't make it past the credits many times. But, you know, if it's an engaging date, like, you know, we've gone for a walk with Karura, how do you sleep on a walk? Wow, oh, you can't. Yeah. So, okay, let's just say you fall asleep on a movie date. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Who is more adventurous? You, Eric, Sandra, is it the same? Eric? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, who is the best cook? <clears throat> Eric. Eric, wow. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Um, who has the worst handwriting? 
<laughs> Sandra. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, I have to say. Okay. That's the, I like that's these his, questions. That's... I like these questions. They're very good. First of all, I have to say, Katie, money has been poured. And we are not even... <laughs> like, yeah, I'm agreeing, money has money. been poured. How come money you has been poured? We must have a question here for Eric. I'm listening very keenly. <laughs> Just seeing Eric is putting everything on Sandra. Is that right? <laughs> anyway, um, who is funnier? Eric, start on it. Hands down. Okay. Um, who has the best taste in music? I'm seeing Sandra cringing. That's, that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I mean, I was going to play for you guys Munishi or, uh, you know. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Ooh, <laughs> I mean, those are my jams. You know, it's good. It's good to just, you know, to be honest. Munishi, <laughs> okay, Sawa. Um, who takes who talks the most? Sandra. <laughs> okay, who is the better dancer? That and I'm winning. I'm Funny. winning in relationships. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Eric, you have two left feet. <laughs> Yep. Okay, and the last one, who is normally the first one to apologize? Sandra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've won it. I've won it. We have a yeah. Okay, um, thank you so much. Um, I think that that one has helped us to, you know, learn so much about you too. Yeah, and so um I know you guys had like a little mentimeter, um, you know, for us to engage in. So yeah, you could maybe kindly share your screen. Yeah. But thank you. I hope you guys were able to know more about Sandra um, and Eric. We now know who falls asleep. <laughs> we now know who has the worst handwriting. <laughs> We now, we now know who has the best taste in music. Um, and I think that's, you know, um, the best part about relationships that we are two, we are like really different, but, you know, the differences um, come put us um, together. It complements us, you know, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I think that's the best thing about relationships. So I'm already more excited. Sandra, are you ready? Uh... In just a bit, guys, I wanted to share this. This is okay. how technology can, can disappoint you. <laughs> no problem. I'm not giving too much away about how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> I should have asked that the older one. <laughs> yeah. I think I think that one uh, we know who the winner is. <laughs> Yeah, so guys, um, please use the chat box um, section to ask more questions, put comments. Um, yeah, I can see Mary Nasali saying, oh, Sandra. It's like Sandra was just the one who was, you know, but it's all right. Um, I can see Aisha laughing over there. Yeah, like, it was really hilarious. Um, I can see Josiah saying, wow, and Pauline and Matthew saying, beautiful. Yeah, so keep um, your comments coming in. Um, Keep your, you know, questions coming in. We'll, we're going to have mm -hmm. a Q&A session. Um, and mm -hmm. Eric and Sandra are going to, you know, have a chance to um, answer all your questions. Yeah, so authentic, authentic sharing. So um, the link is in the chat section. Mm -hmm. So if you're using um, maybe your laptop or your phone, your just phone. click mm -hmm. on the link. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are going to sort of have a Mentimeter session just to get to know what your expectations are. So please put your thumbs up um, on the chat section if you're good to go. Because we're gonna have like two, uh, two minutes to just let everyone yeah. go in, yeah.
you guys are able to see my screen? Yes, we are. Yeah, I can see. And the answers are coming through. Yeah, then. answers coming in. Fantastic. Yes, I love this. So what are you grateful for today? People are saying family, being alive, um, Jesus, relationships, life, God. I'm personally grateful, you know, um, just for this KBS space. Yeah. God's love. Food. Wow. We have a foodie in the house. <laughs> okay. Um, life, being alive, family, good stuff. House. Yes, definitely house. Um, good health good health, relationships, keep them coming, guys. Music, wow. Okay, um, I think we can go maybe to the next one. Um, Let me just activate the next question for guys, just a sec. Okay. Um, Uh, <laughs> and I'm trying to get to the next one. Okay. Katie, you need to come in with some music for me because uh, no problem. I got you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, guys, um, I think let's just uh, go on because I'm not able to go to the next slide for some reason. Um, but it's good to see what everyone is grateful for. You know, we have some foodies, we have some musicians in the house. Um, yes. We're all grateful for a, a nice warm home and because it's chilly today and it's raining. So great, great, great. Okay, um, um, I think we can use, um, you know, some people to just maybe tell us what they're expecting. Now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, like, what's, what's that, you know, when they think about relationships, what do they think of um, what they're expecting this morning? So I'm going to put maybe someone on the spotlight. Um, hi, Karen. Thank you for joining us this morning. <laughs> If you could please unmute and just tell us um, a bit, you know, um, what do you um, what do you think about relationships? Maybe what are your expectations this morning? Welcome, Karen. I don't know if you're there. Um. Okay, what I understand about relationships is that uh, the base of a good relationship is God and, um, yeah, and um, yes, uh, and, and people don't have to be the same. People can be compatible and they will mm -hmm. still have a, a, a good relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and what I'm expecting today is to is to understand more about relationships and especially keeping relationships with people because in my life especially some some relationships are a bit temporary yeah so i'm 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 here today to 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 understand more about that yeah oh wow thank you so much karen um, thank you even for your courage, you know, I, I know I put it on this, I put you on the spotlight, but thank you for sharing. Um, and definitely um, relationships begin with God. And so we are going to, you know, hear more about that um, from Eric and Sandra. Um, just one more person. Um, 
Hi, Josiah. I'd like to put you on the spotlight, representing the gentleman in the house. <laughs> yeah, so from you, um, what do you think about relationships and what are you expecting? Um, well, what I think about relationships is how we relate with one another, with the people around us and just how we get along. Um, what I expect today is just how to advise on how to navigate such relationships and, you know, working in a Christian way towards mm -hmm. having a good relationship. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Josiah. Um, you're in the right place. You're definitely in the right place. Yeah. So thank you so much. Um, I'd just like to, you know, set in the mood. I know we've already begun. Um, but I'd like to, you know, set in the mood um, by playing um, a short video. Um, <clears throat> Jesus. Yeah, so um, so please listen through the video. It is day five of the relationship goal challenge. Challenge today. I want to take it a little talk to you about the last four days and some of you, wherever you're at in the process, I'm going to talk to you about how important it is that you're putting your relationship in this spot of going from good to great. And the thing that people got to really understand is relationships are all about purpose. Like they're literally about the purpose God has for your life, the purpose that you have with somebody else, the purpose you're supposed to fulfill together. And a lot of people don't really realize how God has formed relationships from the foundation of the earth to help you fulfill purpose. Your relationships will help you fulfill purpose. Everybody that wants to be isolated and alone, everybody that wants to do it on your own, I don't really need nobody, that's not how God set this thing up. He wants you to first invite him in and be your number one relationship goal. And that means we pray, we talk to him, we, we, we worship, we, we go to church, we do things that help build our spirit, man, but it wasn't enough to do that. If it was enough to do that, then Jesus would have came here by himself and not rolled with a crew. He decided to do this life in relationship, and it's the same thing that he desires for you. If you want to win in relationships, you need to want them. You need to desire them. You need to know that they're a part of God's purpose for your life. And I know it may be tough because you've been hurt in purpose or hurt, not just in purpose, you've been hurt in relationships that made you be damaged in what you thought your purpose was. Somebody spoke a bad word over you or didn't do what they said. This is what I'm asking you to forgive them and let them go and move towards what God's purpose is for your life. So many of your giftings and talents, so many of the things that are deep inside of your heart they are from you, but they are not going to be done without others. And that means that you're going to have to trust that your relationships are more a part of your purpose than maybe you want to give them credit for. And for me, this is a hard thing because I like doing stuff by myself. If you can't do it, if you don't want to get down, I'm going to find. I'll figure out how to do it myself. And God has brought me to a level in my leadership to understand that, no, you were never intended to do it by yourself. You were supposed to do it with community, in relationship, with the team, with your spouse, with the people that God places in your life. So that begs two questions. Number one, who's in your life that doesn't need to be right? See, because a lot of people are draining us in the place that we're supposed to be finding purpose because they're not even supposed to be there right now. And the mm -hmm. second question that you need to ask yourself, who have you been pushing out of your life that you actually need to be inviting into your life? I'm telling you that one of the greatest revelations I ever had was that the people God sends to me 
I have to cultivate those relationships because it's going to help me reach my purpose. Let's go a little deeper in your marriage with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend, with the person that you're thinking about getting in relationship with right now. Are they there to help you in purpose? Some of those people right now are pulling you away from what you know God has called you to do. And others are pushing you towards the thing that God is calling you to do and you don't want to hear it. I think of a story when my wife came into my life. This is years back. I married my high school sweetheart. I met her when she was 14 years old. And when I came into the place where I was like, this is the girl that I'm going to be with at least till next year. I didn't know that God had planned for not only to be in my life forever. He had purposed her. That reminds me of the scripture that says in Jeremiah that I know the plans I have for you to play for you fully. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope in the future. When I met Natalie, he saw me at 34 years old when we were 14. He had purpose for me to be in that relationship. And the truth is, I almost messed it up. I, I was working against the purpose that God had for our relationship. But I would not be the man I am today. I would not be the husband I am. I would not be the pastor, the leader, or the author unless I had that relationship in my life, Natalie being in my life, was for my purpose. And I'm saying to you, there may be people that God is illuminating around you that are supposed to be helping you in purpose. Now, say it even stronger. If your relationships aren't helping you in purpose, what are they doing? And let me say it even one step further than that. If you're not helping people in their purpose, what are you doing? I want you to win in relationship. And God wants to be the center of everything that you have planned. The scripture says many are the plans that we make up, but his purpose prevails over. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah, um, there's just so much, you know, um, that, you know, that's, um, Pastor Michael Todd, you know, has, has spoken about relationships. And I just wanted us to begin, you know, right where he started off, that um, relationships, um, that, that relationships help us, you know, to fulfill purpose and all that. So I begin with maybe you, Sandra. Um, when did you meet um, Eric? <laughs> um, but before that, how would you maybe define um, relationships? I know the relationships are such a, you know, um, the, we can talk so much about relationships. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, um, relationships, you know, with family, with friends, you know, we have romantic um, relationships. And today I would like us to, you know, really focus on um, friendships, um, relationships with ourselves and relationships, you know, with others, um, you know, romantic relationships and all that. And okay. so to start us off, uh, maybe you would um, tell us what, um, like, what, what do you see like a relationship um, um, is and are there principles to relationships um, from your experience? Wow, Katie, that's a very philosophical question and thank you so much. Um, so I, did what um, I have seen my father do. Um, I went to the dictionary just to understand what is a relationship, yeah? Uh, and by, by my father, I mean my, my, my spiritual father. And, and the, the dictionary tells us that a, a relationship is, um, is one in which two or more people or things are connected. So it's the state of being connected, right? And then it also goes on to say it's, a, it's the state of being connected by blood or by marriage. So we have many relationships you know, with your siblings, with your parents, your cousins, your aunties, your uncles, those are the, the people who are around you. And then to, to uh, Pastor Todd's point, then now God leads you to possibly one of the biggest re relationships that you get to choose, which is marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to your question about what is a relationship, that's what Oxford tells us. But then I go to the biblical, to our, to our authority as Christians, which is the Bible. And the Bible talks about relationships right from the beginning. Yeah, we, we, we see relationships being modeled by 
God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and, and, they, are, and they are in relationship. And all through the word, we see how that plays out, that, that you have to know what is your place in the relationship. So Jesus kept saying that, you know, I only do what I see my father do. Yeah. Um, my father has given me authority. Yeah. Um, I love because my, first, my father first loved. So, and then now the Holy Spirit being the one who goes out on, as God to be omnipresent. So relationships are, can be complicated, but really if you, if you model it from the word, then you have a, a very secure base and you know how to do and not to do. I don't know if that answers your question and if, if Eric wants to weigh in as well. Yeah, Eric, um, you could definitely weigh in. Yes. Um, thank you, Sandra, because, uh, well, as you've had relationships are two or more people being connected. Some relationships are uh, natural, like, you know, brother, sister, parents, and then there's relationships that we choose, which are friends and spouses. The one thing um, I can just add on to what Sandra said is that uh, relationships are a blessing can, can also be a curse. And that is why we are here today, so that we can differentiate between what is a good relationship and what is a bad one. And what, uh, what are the repercussions of what is, the, what is the benefit of choosing a good relationship, the ones that you can't choose, and what is the detriment of choosing one that is not. Because as Pastor Todd has said, relationships are tied to our destiny. We cannot achieve anything uh, by ourselves. So relationships are things that are going to be with us until our last day. So that's one thing I can add. And the second thing is that you're never in one relationship at a time. The way our lives are, you are a brother, but you're also a wife, a, 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 a husband, sorry. You're a brother and a husband at the same time. So you have to wear different hats, different occasions. You're a, you're, you're, you're a, a friend and you're also a boss or someone or a classmate. And so how do you navigate all these different relationships? In one day, you have worn many hats in the same day, and yet you're expected to win in each of these relationships. So very important. Thank you. Wow. Um, I totally love, um, you know, that both of you said um, um, that relationships are really an integral part of who we are as human beings. And, you know, um, Sandra, you know, started off by saying that, um, you know, from the beginning of God, uh, God's creation, you know, it was it was all about relationships. And then you brought in the aspect of, you know, that relationships that we don't choose and there are relationships that we choose. And I definitely love that, which brings me to, you know, um, the, for the relationships that we choose. Um, I believe that for us to be able to, you know, choose the right people, we have to be in relationship, in a good relationship with ourselves first, you know. So for us to have good relationships, um, we have to, first of all, be, you know, the people that we want to be in order to, you know, pour out to others. So maybe I'll start off with you, Eric. Um, from you, uh, from where you are looking back to the young Eric in maybe in high school or in campus, because you know we have like a lot of young people joining us today. So when you were young, um, I'm not saying you're old. I'm just saying when you were younger. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you? How how can you say your self love journey has been? Um, how have you worked on loving yourself, having a relationship with yourself, and how has that impacted, you know, you the way you are, the the man that you are right now? Yeah. Well, uh, I, I like how where we started from, uh, Kate, because truly you cannot give what you do not have. And so the, the place to start is from self. Now, the challenge is that we did not make ourselves. Okay. So 
we sometimes you don't even understand ourselves. You don't know what you like or don't like. You don't like, you don't know what you're good at or not good at. You don't understand yourself. And so that becomes a challenge. So if someone is saying that to understand relationship, you have to deal with yourself, and yet you don't know yourself. So how do you address that? So you go to the one who made you, and that is God, the creator, and find out what does God have to say about me? And then that would be the best place to start. Then from there, you can move from your relationship with God, uh, your relationship with yourself, self-care, and then how you behave with others. Now, looking at my own journey, when I was younger, and, and this is something that I'd like uh, all our, our, our guests here to really just um, to thank God for this platform, because what we shared today, we did not have the benefit of hearing from others. We made things up as we went along. We discovered a lot of these things when we were older and we had made so much, so many mistakes in our lives. When I was young, I did not know Jesus. Um, I, I come from uh, a Christian family. My mom is a prayer. My dad um, is a reserved man, but he knows God. But nobody really... Sorry, I think my... I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, fantastic. So I'm um, just sharing from my own journey. I did not know God at a young age, but God knew me. And looking back, there are a lot of things uh, that God kept me from and, and the kind of uh, uh, um, breakthroughs and protection that God had over me when I was young, making bad decisions, you know, hanging out with the wrong crowd, um, being naughty all the time, rebelling. You know, we had this idea that... To, I was an artist, so artists are rebellious, so you have to be a rebel for you to be a successful artist. And you see, that is such a wrong misconception. God doesn't say anything. There's nothing like that in the Bible, you know. But because that is what the world said, that is what we used to do. So uh, my decisions when I was younger were not good. But over time, God has, has uh, through God's through wisdom and through reading the word, you can find that you can uh, uh, correct some of these things. If you have you, you have bad friends, you can choose not to hang out with them and you can choose different friends, okay? Uh, those are for the mistakes that we did make. But there are other things also that uh, I can say were important. And one of the things as I, I realized, I didn't know then what it was, is that I could see people who we had uh, different, I mean, same values. And those are the people that you'd end up gravitating to. So if you found yourself with naughty people or boastful people or bullies, then it means that, that that is the kind of person that you are. And so you realize that the people that you associate with are a big reflection of who you are. And these are the people that you choose. These are friends. Brothers and sisters, you don't choose. But friends, you do have control over that. Okay. So that's, that's what I can say about my, my journey so far. We'll talk about more, a bit more about those those days but so for, for that let me just say that thank you oh wow thank you um sandra do you have anything to add i think you know eric has really covered it um just from a one you can't give from a place that you, you know that is empty you can't give what you, what you don't have so the relationship with yourself first of all is is, is really um defined by the, the relationship with your maker and, and then the relationship with your maker then defines the relationship that you have with your friends, with your parents, with um, your siblings, you know, with your classmates, with the people who you hang out, because then you're, you're, you're relating with them from a place of the relationship that you have with God. Um, sometimes, like Eric said, you know, when, when we are younger, we want... Um, to be cool, of course, even when you're older, you want to be cool. Um, and, and, and you want to hang out with the people who validate your values. But then the thing, the, the great thing about, about having a, a deep relationship with God is that God, first of all, he, he doesn't change his mind. So he won't tell you today you're cool and then tomorrow he says you're not cool. Anymore. He confirms what he says he says. So if he says you're cool and he says you're smart and he says you're, you're an amazing chef, then that's what you'd be. And then now you look for people who are aligned from, from a value, like with the same values. So I really, I really like what, what Erica said. And, and I would encourage all of us to just work on our relationship with, with God first, then all these other relationships, some of them which may be struggling, 
you will see them god working through them also thank you oh yeah thank you um and i'll just pick up right from where you've left that for us to be able to have a relationship you know a good relationship with ourselves it has to begin um with us having a relationship with god and um looking back at you know um your journey with god how can you say that you know um practically you've been intentional in you know building that relationship with god um how does that look like even from um you know for someone who um is in high school or campus or all that how can that person you know um build a relationship with god and um build their relationship with themselves yeah how do you know and and great question uh, kitty how do you know um somebody how do you know that somebody is your friend because you spend time with them because you like hanging out with them you have a lot to 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 talk about if you know if you're a girl maybe you you spend a lot of time on the phone with them chatting or whatever friendships uh, and relationships need time so i would say the best way to cultivate a relationship with god is to spend time in his word yeah so his word is him so with with technology now you know you can get all these devotionals all these apps like uh, like you version that that give you a daily reading um so that at least every day you're spending time with god and and i really like especially you version they 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 have um uh they do a, a, a verse of the day with videos with you know with cool things that keep you engaged yeah mm. you also need to to check um what are you spending your time on aside from prayer are you what are you listening to you know are you mm. listening to not music are you listening to is it music that that is bring you closer to god or far away from god yeah um there's a lie uh, to eric's point the way he was saying um artists are supposed to be rebellious there's also a lie uh, that christian music is boring that's a lie there's so much great great music out there um that glorifies god and 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 jay has been very kind she 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 started us off with a really hip jam and i hope she she posts a lot of of music as well i think there's a lot of music so what you listen to stays in your in with yourself so you need to you need to check that and i, I think the third thing relationship so what pastor what pastor Todd said who is around you who are the people who you are spending time with if you are a christian and you love god and you, uh, you you're cultivating a relationship with god and the people who you're hanging out with are people who you know are, are only talking about let's go to the club or let's uh, uh, let's do you know all the things that are contrary to what the word of god is saying then you'll find you'll be conflicted so you want to do it but then you're also being pulled on this other side and and it's it's easier if you have friends who you all you you if it's going to church you all go to church if it's uh, going for dance practice you know for example if you're a dancer you all do that together if it's listening to music you all listening to the same music because the bible tells us in proverbs that iron sharpens iron so um if i'm sleeping up then my friend is able to quickly pull me up and say no sandra that is not on you need to do this is how we are living our lives so that's my humble like what i would in humility say can help you get cl- closer to to god um but i'm sure as you spend time with the holy spirit he'll even give you uh, cooler ways or or more interesting ways to 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 come close to him thanks oh wow thank you um i think it's it's important for us you know to always you know um be you know like practical um um and definitely i agree with you that for for us um there, there's just so much content out there and you know for everything that we are feeding ourselves um definitely is what comes out and that plays a huge role in who we are becoming even as as people yeah and I I love how the conversation is going that you know um it starts from having a relationship with God then you 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 get to know more about yourself you know you get to um 
align with, you know, when you align with God's word, then you start cultivating values in your life. You start cultivating, you know, a way of life that is aligned to what God, you know, desires for us. And then that translates to our friendships. And so coming into our friendships, um, when you were, you know, in high school and all that, um, and like from your journey to when you were like in school till now, how have your friendships evolved? And have you lost friends? Have you, you know, um, had conflicts with friends? How does that look like? Um, and how do you solve, you know, um, how do you go about conflicts? I um, mean, this goes to, I can start with you, Eric, especially as a man, you know, you're there with your boys hanging out. There's that crew that you're with in high school, um, you know, or in campus, you know, you guys are doing, you know, one, two, three, you know, maybe a crew with your, with your artistic crew. So, like how has your how have, has your friendship um, evolved over the years, and what are maybe some of the mistakes that you've made that we can learn from you know just from our friendships um, perspective? Um, I'll answer with a story. <laughs> we love stories. <laughs> you love stories. <laughs> cool. So. Um, I went to uh, high school here in Nairobi, and my um, my good friends, uh, the twins. So after high school, they went to uni. Uh, um, I didn't go to uni at that time. I went to work. Um, so uh, what would happen when they? So we are, were friends all from from form one to form four, and then it happened that we also lived in the same neighborhood because we'd spend all day in school together because we're in day school and then in the evening we'd be in South Sea all of us are close we've been together four years then now they've gone to uni so after work I would go and join them uh, where they used to hang out and one of their classmates was called Sandra so I used to see her there and I was like hey this Kagali is pretty Hey, this guy works, he has some money, he's not broke like these other students, you know. And that's where we met. So we met through my friends who we met through mutual friends. Friendships are important in that way because I truly believe it, if it wasn't for that, if if they went to a different uni, we would have probably never met and we would not be here talking. So you can see the importance of friends when God uses a friendship for, for one thing or another. Now, the funny thing is that me and the guy are not very close today. So again, tells you that friendships evolve, okay? So the people who are very close with, even in high school, uh, we were okay and we were friends for that season. But we found that as we grow older, as we take different paths in life, you find that your, your values are what will determine the people that you're with. And there's nothing wrong. It's not that we are not friends. We don't talk. We are not enemies in any way. We can, I can call them and, and we, can, you know, we can chat, but we are not close. And that is fine. That happens. So relationships, there's, there's relationships which are for a season and there's relationships which God uses for something just to introduce you to one person or the other and, and connecting dots. And that's why we, were, we started by saying that you cannot live in isolation. You can't go and, and, and put yourself somewhere together. So that's the story of, of, it explains how we met and the importance of friendships. So that's important. Now, um, the second part of the question was, uh, are there mistakes? Of course, yes. And, and of course, the biggest mistake in friendship is, uh, the first one is, I would say, not standing up for your values in that you can be in a group of, of, of friends and, and what is going on is not good and you can feel that it's not good, but you don't stand up and don't say, no, I can't be part of this. And you find that you're going with the crowd and later on you regret it and you ask why, why all I had to do was say, no, I won't go to that party, you know, or no, I won't try that. I won't, I won't play that game or I won't take that uh, a cigarette or whatever it is. Okay. So 
one of the things I wish I would have done better was maybe to stand up uh, and, and, and just not do some of the things. Of course, even choosing uh, some of the friends. And, and a lot of people you find that we, you don't even talk to at all because you reach a point where you see that this person, uh, you're not compatible in any way. You have different values. Uh, people are not growing. The, the same things you used to talk about 20 years ago is still what you're talking about now and, and not moving with the times, not growing. And you find that you just drift. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's what I can share. I'm sure Sandra can say something as well. Yes. Um, thank you, Eric. Sandra, would you like to add? No, I think to be honest, I think you've covered it. I think you know, um, we it's not to say there's 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 a saying that that says that you know there's friends for a season, there's friends for a reason, and there's friends for a lifetime. Um, the, 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 the wise thing, and, and that's why Holy Spirit then helps us, is to know, is this friendship for the rest of my life? Or is this friendship um, just for this uh, time that I'm in campus, you know, maybe like a study buddy, or when you're in high school, you know, somebody who you can be able to share the word and grow together. And then maybe when they, they go, maybe they go to uni um, outside of the country or to a different place, then, then the, 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 the relationship um, has lived its purpose. Um, the important thing I think would be when you're in the relationship, try and be the friend that you, you want. Don't want a friend you know, who has your back, who supports you, who you know buys you gifts because friendships and relationships take time and, and effort. And then you you don't want to you you don't want to invest. So you know you want this person to come and, and, and hang out with you and help you. Maybe you have a, a, a an assignment you've been given by your parents, but then when it's their turn, hey, all of a sudden you're too busy. Yeah. So I would just possibly want us to hold up that that um, Mira and say, am I the kind of friend that I want my friend to be? And from a relationship, like having a friend, mis making mistakes, yes, yes. Um, but what I love about God is that he's a redemptive God, is that some of these uh, friendships and relationships that maybe caused you to make a mistake or a mishap, that God can take that and he can turn it around and make something really beautiful out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if, if the friendship was, was not based on the right values or foundation, maybe God is, is, wants you to meet somebody through that, like, you know, like Eric said, or to learn a lesson that will help you now in the future. So mm -hmm. having a discussion with Holy Spirit, even about your friends is so important. And about your relationships, it's so important to say, Holy Spirit, this is my friend. I really, really enjoy their company. I really like hanging out with them. We seem to be um, flowing, you know, we have the same values. But just show me what whether this relationship is for for a lifetime, yeah, or it'll get to a point that I need to learn something and then move on to my next. Thanks. Thanks, Kate. And, and, and thank you for that, um, Sandra and Eric. Um, and I think one of the things that I've picked up is that, you know, it's very important to grow in, you know, in your relationships, whether it's, you know, in relationship with God or yourself or even in your friendships, that it's important to, to grow, you know. Um, it doesn't help, you know, having a friend like Eric said, who you're still talking things that, you know, like five years ago, you're still talking the, you know, having the same conversations. You need to, you know, have um, friends and people in your life that you're growing with. And that there's also nothing wrong with, you know, falling out, you know, um, of friendships. If someone is, is not really, you know, growing with you and you, you know, you feel like you're not in the same wavelength, then it's fine. Um, to move on and God really orchestrates people to come in our lives. So thank you so much for that. And as we just um, dive deeper into friendships, um, have you encountered any, um, I can say, 
painful, you know, moments where um, you've fallen out with a friend, maybe um, um, the friend maybe sort of did something, you know, um, to you and, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, you're just like, I'm so done with friends. I just want to be alone. Mimi, you know, you know, what ground is really different. So, and, you know, it's not all rosy when it comes to having relationships with people, especially friends. And so, um, have you, have, have you been hurt before by a friend and how were you able to heal from that and, you know, be able to trust people again? Yeah, maybe we can start with you, Sandra. Wow. Um, so absolutely, I have been hurt deeply um, by, by somebody who um, now is, is, is still my friend, not like Jesus, you know, Jesus had, it was him and then the three, yeah, mm -hmm. and then the 12, and then the 70. So I, as I've grown older, I've realized that they were all his disciples, but there's things that he would share with the three, the intimate ones, his friends, John, you know, and then the 12, and remember Judas was inside the 12, eh? mm. and then the 70. So there's somebody who was in my 12, and um, she did, she, she had me. Um, it was, it's, it's really a philosophical, you know, almost uh, values based thing because as you grow older, then the things that you value, like it, whether it's family or whatever, take precedence over other things. Yeah. Um, but I, God is good because then again, I guess it's age, you're able to say, okay, it's no big deal. We can still be pals, but you're just not in my inner circle and it's cool. But I also want to say that inadvertently, I'm sure, even I, and, and this is something that now I had to, to sit with the Holy Spirit and say, who have I had? Because, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes we, it's, it's very easy for, for us to, to say, oh, you know, so and so hurt me, and, and, and they really, they're not a real friend, oh, I'm done with them, and all of that. But you also have to go back and say, even me, what did I do to, to that person? Could, could, that, could I have done something to trigger or to mm. make them do something, you know, to me? Or even without trigger, could I have somebody who was my real pal, I let them down, knowing or not knowing? Mm. And that's what relationships are. And, and I, I, again, I go back, I keep going back to the Bible because that's where we get our direction. Because none of these guys... Imagine even David was once a teenager, you know? It's just that now him, he didn't have TikTok and uh, Instagram. <laughs> him, he was, <laughs> him, he was busy with lions, bears, and, and Goliath, you know? Um, but he was a teenager. And all of us, if you read the Psalms, you, you see he, he was struggling with the same things, that, that even he was deeply, deeply betrayed, but he, he also um, betrayed Uriah. So, it's, it's for saying, um, yes, you've hurt me, extend grace, yeah? Try and understand, why is, why, is, um, why is Eric always mean to me? Is it maybe, is it the way I talk to him, you know? Uh, maybe if I, if I change the way I talk to him, would it be better? So you try and, and repair the relationship. And, and if it's not repairable, because some are just like, like he was saying, you know, your values just go like this, one mm. way and the other way, north and south. Then that's fine, and, and you're amiable, and if you meet in town, you high five each other, and 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 that's okay. Yeah, mm. I don't know if I've answered your question, Kate. Yes, yes, you have. Um, I think um, it's it's definitely something that you know, um, because we are totally different people. Um, these you know these these are there's a way that we can um we can um like there's a way that even if we we are in conflict you know um it's just up to you to be you know the person who i can say look down um uh, look, look deep down to yourself and then ask yourself okay how did i play a role in this i think that's like was an ouch moment where how did i 
you know what was my role even when you know this why this person is not talking to me um you know it's good to like analyze yourself um are you the problem you know and that kind of a thing so i think that's very very important um i don't know eric if you would like to maybe add on something yes definitely um one thing we can agree on is that there's no perfect relationship even even the best of relationships um mother and child sibling uh, marriages like us there will always be conflict that is the reality of of the world that we live in and the reason for that is because we are all we are not perfect mm -hmm. we are all flawed in one way or the other but the bible tells us to make room for each other and love covers a multitude of sins okay we are also told that we forgive not because we are good but because christ forgave us first because god christ died for us okay mm. so of course as there have there been um cases where i've, I've been hurt yes um where you find that a very close friend is taking advantage of you because they 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 see elements in you and they they just use you for one thing or the other and um, and and that's quite hurtful and especially when it comes to someone who is very close mm. it also happens with siblings you know people who are your 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 own flesh and blood they will hurt you they will say hurtful things they will do things behind your back they'll take your things they will disrespect you these things will happen but we just go back to the word and we say you know um, i'll be the bigger person it's not easy but the holy spirit enables us when we are willing to forgive okay it's not to mean that you stay with people who hurt you constantly no we don't say that what we are saying is that you're able to see okay this is a relationship that is not working or this person is continuously in this way they continuously lie or they continuously um, talk behind my back or something like that and you say okay you 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 forgive and then you also make a barrier okay you disconnect yourself from that person so that you're not continuously hurt if it's a sibling then it could be a bit more uh, difficult because then you have to address root cause because you can't disconnect yourself from your sibling you can stay away from them later in life but if you're living in the same roof or sharing a bedroom you see might that might be an issue so we go back to the word and we say what does the word say about conflict okay so you address the issue and you forgive because Christ forgave you first. And then from there, if it's something that you can rectify, then you do. If it's not, then you change yourself. In a lot of the time, as Sandra said, you have a role to play in this. Maybe you have a temper. Maybe you are difficult. You know, there's things about yourself. If you're very honest, you can tell that they contributed to the, to the conflict or whatever it could be. So first change yourself. Talk to the other person if it's something that you can change change if it's not then you distance yourself but you forgive you release if you carry these things if you carry heart in mm. your heart then you'll end up hurting the other people that is the reality we cannot give from a, you, you give what you have so if you're carrying trauma if you're carrying disappointment and hatred and bitterness that is what will radiate about you mm. you cannot carry a heart or, or a disappointment in your life for sure it will come out it will come out in the way that you behave it will come out in the way that you treat people the way that you talk to people um for us it's even more dangerous because it will come out even in your children you see if if i'm bitter and and always uh hurtful i have a bad temper i will transfer it to my children and that will affect that relationship okay but if we come from a point of love for a point of um allowing each other room for for mistakes and forgiving and talking honestly then that is what you'll radiate Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I, I think that's very practical um, because, you know, some of us, you know, may be struggling with a lot of um, bitterness and unforgiveness, you know, from people who have hurt us, um, whether it's friends um, or, you know, um, people who we were dating or, you know, um, people who um, our maybe our family members, our siblings, and it's really important for us to you know seek healing, so that um, you know we, we 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 don't live in that bitterness. Um, I think 
I'm reminded of a, a quote that says, unforgiveness um, is like drinking poison, um, your own poison, and then expecting the other person to die. You know, um, when we have a bitterness and unforgiveness, it, it's it's really damaging us more than how it's damaging, you know, the other person. Um, and also that healing takes time, you know, um, and the fact that we are human beings, we are different, conflict will always be there. But um, when when conflict happens, you know, it's it's we can really rely on God to heal us. So thank you for, I feel, I feel that I really feel it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I remember earlier, you said that, you know, you met Sandra when, you know, um, in your circle of friends, uh, people you are hanging out with. And which brings me to the, you know, the next, um, I can say level of relationships, which is dating. Um, and I think from that, I picked up that you guys were friends first before you started dating, you'll tell us. But when it comes now to dating, um, you know, when you, Eric, um, you saw Sandra, you know, this girl is cute, you know, she's looking hot. Um, what can you say um, is, you know, dating um, and, are there principles to dating? You know, is there like a right age to dating? What, uh, please tell us. Yeah, yeah. Eventually we're going to end up here. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a part of life. And uh, one of the reasons why we are here is so that uh, we can share so that uh, these wonderful young people can learn from us so that don't make mistakes that we made so that they, are, they can have it easier than we did. Uh, they don't have to struggle through the same things that we did. So one thing we can agree on, um, especially in our time before, this is way before social, way before, actually before the internet, a long time ago, we had encyclopedias <laughs> and books. So those really, <laughs> <laughs> there was really no information about about dating um, in the society that we live in, in the Africa. Society. These things are not talked about. So your parents will not, maybe now the parents are doing it, but in our days, our parents would never talk to us about anything like that. In fact, if you were seen with a girl or a boy, that was a problem. That was a big issue. You couldn't even say something like that. So it was, it's, it's, I, I feel like it was just uh, covered up. People behaved like it didn't exist. And that was not a good thing. It would be better to talk about these things openly. So, so when we got to dating age, and that may be controversial, but we believe that truly dating is from 18 and above because, um, that, that's what I mean, because that is when your mind is fully developed to appreciate what it is to be in a relationship. Uh, we'll talk a bit more and realize that relationship is, is work. And takes a, a certain level of uh, growth for one to be in a successful relationship. So we thank God that we met uh, about 20 years. We were 20 years old, I would say, uh, in our early 20s. So there was no really playbook. You know, you, you'd see a, a girl that you like or a guy that you like, and depending on how brave you are, you'd either go for it or send someone around that so for me it helped that we spent a lot of time together in a group okay so it makes it a bit easier and you see i by my personality was i was very shy so i wouldn't go and and just you know go and approach a, a girl and say hi you know i wouldn't do that but in a group i could i could make my moves you know and, and that is how i kind of sneaked in uh, behind sandra because she was also very tough a lot of guys used to fear her she was very feisty very feisty so but there was that comfort in the group we were about maybe six a group of six and with every weekend every evening yeah. and, and that is how we started now so we'd find that we, we became friends and we, 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 we liked hippie music that most of the people didn't enjoy so we found that we connected on that level we liked reading a lot of our not read anything uh, they just watch movies so we, we found that we had similar interests and you know it starts from small things like that but you can find that you, you can end up having a four-hour discussion about one book you see 
because there's depth and and there's I can say uh, there's there's we we are one mind. We have the same interest and we can go deep into one topic. It could be sport, it could be music, it could be us, uh, anything. Uh, I'm just talking about what what works for us. So uh, yeah, we loved art and and things which are a bit leftist, and we found that you know it was cool. And what happens is that you, you find that you get a relationship where you can spend time and you don't even notice the time going on. You don't notice that you, you've been uh, talking for hours and or others or the others left and you are left just the two of you talking and you didn't even notice. So friendship and that and truly that friendship has been the foundation of our our marriage. Now our Sorry, Eric, I think we've lost you. Um, oh yeah, can hear you now. Not now? Yeah. Hey, we you me the way I've talked. <laughs> Sorry, we uh, left you at um, friendship is the foundation. <laughs> okay. that, that, that's not too far. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the, the, the point here is that anything that lasts need to be on some sort of foundation, okay? The only foundation that will stand the test of time is Christ. Even a friendship cannot last forever. There's things that will come and challenge that friendship. And if that is all that you had to stand on, then you'll be left with nothing. But that sustained us for that time. And that is by the grace of God. So that we, 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 could, we could laugh. You know, it's not... A good relationship is where you can really be yourself with the other person. Mm. The other person gets you, yeah? Especially when you're odd or you're, you have different values, you're not part of the crowd. And when you find someone who shares things with you, at the time you won't know what it is, but there'll be a connection that is there. Not Nothing to do with romance or anything like that. It's just a connecting of the minds. You can tell that I, I can really feel this person. Yeah, mm. and you'll find that it, it's not forced, it's not um, pretentious in any way. It comes very naturally. And because the next question will be, how did you know she was the one? I know. The next question <laughs> yes. will come. You're pre that you don't really... <laughs> <laughs> I, it, I know. You know, we can't talk about relationships without discussing how do you know that this is the person for me? Because it's a it's a very difficult question to ask uh, and answer. And, and a lot of people have ended up with the wrong uh, partner and had some very um, disastrous uh, results. And, and that is not what we wish on anyone. So when, when you're truly genuine with someone and over time you'll come to see that you have a connection with this person. It, has, it may not be physical in any way, but yes, a friendship is an integral part. And if you want to think about it, look at some of these older couples that you might have seen, maybe your grandparents or just an older couple. You see them uh, taking a walk together. They are probably in their 70s, you know. Uh, and you'll see that what, has, what, what, what these people have is a friendship. Mm. Yeah? They are friends. Mm. They laugh. They make fun of each other. You know, they can enjoy a joke. They can do things for each other. You can mm. see that that is the thing that has been consistent in their relationship. And so, yes, friendship is one of the most critical things uh, in, in, in when you're dating. Other things, you know, people say, you know, uh, do they look the way that, you know, the kind of person that you want? Are they tall, dark, and handsome? Do they have a size eight figure? And, you know, do they, the things, I don't know what it is that the young people look for, but all those things fade with time. But friendships, a friendship is one of the things that will last decades. Mm. Uh, yes, so very important. Wow, I think I've picked up, you know, a lot um, just from you know, everything that you've shared that, you know, um, it's really important, you know, when you're, you know, when you find someone that you're attracted to, that, you know, you have similar interests, you have like similar community, you know, like just a community where you guys are part of similar values, you know, a connection, um, both, you know, like a chemistry and also like a connection of minds and, and definitely um, good friendship, which is, you know, a good foundation. So 
I think these are really important um, things that, you know, um, sort of we miss out. Um, we only just look at the outward, you know, someone looks nice and all that. But if we really want to create meaningful relationships, especially um, when you're at that point of, you know, looking for someone to start dating and all that, then it's important to, like, it's for it to be very meaningful, you know, interest, connection is all that. So, um, which brings me to like the next question of um, how was your dating journey? You know, um, let's put things like, you know, qua ground, like in context that, um, first of all, were the two of you um, born again? And if you were, how was the dating um, experience? You know, um, you're young, you're energetic, you know, your your levels of sexual desire are high, you know, and these are things that we go through as young people. Um, you're really attracted to this person. So how was that experience for you? Uh, we can send you and Sandra. Where even Pastanji saying, wa la 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 the questions. <laughs> kwa ground kuko ivo. Kwa ground, kwa ground, yes. ni kama kuna waka moto. Uh, <laughs> um, so to your, to your first question, we were not born again. Um, we, at that point, like, you know, like, you said we didn't have a playbook we we were just almost winging it yeah but then you realize um that god is so gracious that even when you're in the dark even when you don't know um that he holds your hand so are there things that we we did uh when we were younger like going out to the club and so on that we shouldn't have done yes are there uh decisions that we took um, especially with regards to um, how the flow of the of the relationship went, because you know we would have wanted to to go to church and get married in church earlier. So you know these are some of the pitfalls of of, of not having the the most important relationship, which is Christ first. Um, I know there's a lot of pressure. I know there's a lot of expectation from young people, you know, your friends, all your friends are doing it, all your friends are, you know, in relationships where they're having um, sexual, um, it's, a, it's a sexual relationship already and, and people are not married. But then, like Eric said, that, that community thing, you know, even, even then, we, we can say that having that community of people who we, we shared some sort of values was helpful because we didn't get into some of the wilder things that were going on at that time. So having having people who you guys have the same values is helpful because, you know, like Katie wouldn't see me if you're my pal, you wouldn't see me making a mistake and just leave me there. You, you call me aside and say, hey, I, this one, I don't think this is the route to go. Um, and remember, we are trying to live in a certain way. So, so that helps. Um, and just having your identity firmly in Christ, knowing who God has called you to be. The, the pressure will be will always be there. Don't be lied to at, a, at a now when you get to a certain age, there's no pressure. There's pressure, even for us, there's pressure. Um, to do and to engage in, 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 in things that don't align with what the word of God says. But because now, now thankfully, we have that relationship with, with Jesus that has been worked out, then it's easier for you to say, that one, not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And 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 if if somebody drops off of your circle because of that, then you just say, adios, amigo, see you on the other side. And it's okay. Um, but really to hold on to your values and to your purity is something that we we would really really encourage the young people because we have seen the fruits of that now even over time so to Eric's point you know we we started dating when we were very young we were in our early 20s um and it was a tunnel to us dating yeah it was because when you're <laughs> when you're not in jesus when you go out you cause another, then you come back, then you first you break up when you're out. 
then now after one uh, the next day now uh, those digital sms because there was no whatsapp eh? so you try you sms the person oh i'm sorry then maybe they sms you back or not then so it was very tumultuous it was chaos um but by god's grace by god's grace we have um whether that storm and then we were able to now get married and have children and just to encourage everybody that it is doable don't believe the lie that i mean look at uh, pastor Todd. they met at 14 and they are now 34 with four children right Katie? Mm. imagine that yeah. and and they are they are still strong do i say that go and have a relationship at 14 no because i'm with eric one by at 14 you're a child at 18 you're possibly still a child but then because the, the whole essence of especially a romantic relationship is that it ends in marriage yeah so if you can be able to 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 walk that journey then you find as you grow older it will be much 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 easier for you i hope i've answered the question thanks yes 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 you have um and just to throw it to eric um are there some you know um i know sandra has said that um, you guys, when you were dating, um, at that time you weren't born again and all that. But now that you're born again, um, looking back, what are some of the, I can say, um, things that you can advise uh, for us as young people to do right? Um, you know, just apart from, I know Sandra has talked about, you know, um, avoiding um sex you know before marriage and all that but while you're dating um what are some of the practical things that we can do to avoid such and when you does it mean that the person you date is the person you're gonna marry since like you guys you know started dating you said 20 right yeah so does it mean that um every person you date you're gonna marry them um yeah. I can't ask questions. Um, what are the practical ways? Uh, so as for sure, we didn't have any practical ways, as Sandra said, as we just winged it. But now, uh, by the grace of God, and in hindsight, we have something to share, so that you don't have to walk that journey as well. And one of the things that um, I would really encourage everyone here to do, and don't wait till tomorrow, don't wait until Monday, is to really sit down and think about what it is that you stand for. What are your principles? What are the things that you will not accept? The things that, where you draw the line. Mm -hmm. And of course, this cannot come from your mind. They cannot, you cannot say, um, my principles means I cannot sit with someone who drinks alcohol. That is not a principle. A principle is something that you, you truly value. Is it friendship? Is it honesty? Is it uh, diligence and excellence? Is it creativity? Is it uh, love? And these things are unique to each and every one of us. Okay? The things that we share, yes, as a body of Christ, but these things which are very unique. And that's how you find that these things that irritate Sandra so much, but they and there's things that will work me up so much and how she's fine it because we are different. There's things that we share, but there's things that individually we are very unique. In. So if you know what your principles are, then you know you cannot be unequally yoked. And by that, that's what the Bible says. You cannot be equally yoked. You cannot walk with someone a journey unless two agree. So if you already know what your principles are and you meet someone who, yes, they may be physically attractive, but they don't share your principles. I can tell you that is a recipe for disaster because eventually there will be a huge conflict in the conflict of, 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 of principles. So um, now, does it mean that everyone you date, you will marry? It will, be, it will be good if you if you date for marriage because the way that we understand courtship, courtship is a relationship with an intention to marry. It may not be that everyone uh, that you, you go out with, you end up married. But it would be good if you don't have update 12 people to find your spouse, you know, isn't it? And so 
having yeah. a value having a value system uh, uh, that you you truly understand that you know is from god will help you at least see through uh the, the the people who you cannot truly date and that has to come from god and it's and you will know it nobody can come and tell you you can't share somebody you can't copy more else's principles they are only of you okay so, mm-hmm. so that is a practical step and that will help you to 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 differentiate this is just a friend and this is someone who i can i i can i can have a life with mm. and, and alexander says holy spirit will reveal these things to you it is only we didn't know it then but it truly it's only holy spirit because holy spirit can reveal something to you about someone that even that person themselves don't know about themselves you know mm. and that makes a big, big big difference okay uh, that's 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 an important uh, aspect and it's and it's a lot of unfortunately it's not talked about much uh, yeah. but it is very important i like dr miles monroe when, when he teaches uh, especially the the men like the men here the young men dr miles would teach that don't go dating if you don't know where you're going mm. because you you the person that you're coming you're inviting to is coming to follow you so how will they follow you if you don't know where you're going mm. so first you have to define you have to ask god what is what is my vision where is it that i want to go so you can already tell for example if 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 you've been called to be a missionary i'll just use a practical example so god tells you um you have this talent you can speak you, you have a talent for speaking multiple languages and god says i will send you across the world to preach my word and then someone else their vision is here in, in in the world or they they want to make a big business in Kenya and you are being sent across the world there's already a conflict in visions there and you can see that you bring an issue you want to travel or you're being sent away and it and it's something that happens mm. okay so you have to find a vision especially men it's very important how will the lady follow you if you don't know where you're going so what you have to pate kama unaenda and then what they come to do is that they come to help you in your journey okay yeah. and that is what you do have that conflict and competition one of the things we didn't uh, say at the beginning is um you know when we were, were asked to come and speak about winning in uh, winning in relationships and we asked them we prayed and we really spent time and we asked what what does that mean what is it what does it look like to win in a relationship and The funny thing is that the word is 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 opposite in the in the wisdom of the world and we found that the way to win is not to compete. Mm. The way to win is not to compete. Because the second you start to compete then you're already lost. Wow. <laughs> there will always be someone better. There will always be someone better. There'll always be someone prettier than you. There'll always be someone with more money. You cannot a lot of uh, couples have struggled because the man and the woman are con- continuously competing continuously competing where they should be uh, united they should be working towards the same vision so you know there's a lot of discussion of vision and people think that it's just towards the market it's, it's just about your career but the there's the visions are tied to the person that you will marry and understanding your vision early enough will help you choose the right spouse mm. those two things are connected and i think pastor can also say something here is that there's marriages of purpose and those are things that you realize even later in life and you cannot the first thing is to start and find the vision is uh, get your principles correct and all of these things that you will be able to know that this person we are working together and this person we cannot work and and this and the scripture that we had even for it's philippians 2:3 i think uh, sandra you can post it there uh that that to win you you don't compete that is not the way that god built relationships they are for uplifting each other not for competing thank you what <laughs> <That's the energy. laughs> even had to disappear for some minutes let me take a walk what as for madam kids guy He remind me not to be on the other side of the camera when you are doing interviews I'm refusing any interviews going forward <laughs> Her questions are deep and hard which is good 
because she's gotten you to open up and to share things. And like Eric even said, you know me, I'm so glad. You know, we didn't have anyone to tell us anything. Watch are winging it. We were winging it in the wrong way. We were going in the wrong direction. And it's just encouraging for me to see young people here who we can learn. And that statement, winning, you can't compete. Winning in relationship is not about competition. It's so powerful because I don't even know how you want me to win. But one of the mistakes I made, I think, in, our, in, my, in my relationship is there was a lot of competition. I was like, okay, you think you can come home late? Let me show you. You have no idea. I will come home late. You'll be shocked. You think you can go and hang? Ah, gotcha, Nikoneshe. I will show you I can go out even me. So it was always about competing, which is really foolish looking back. Um, so I don't even know what the question was, but you can't compete. You see, first of all, even the way we started with identity is very important because first you have to know who you are, because even trying to rob the world of who you are is a big problem already. Yeah, they, you are unique, so you can't be like somebody else, but I don't know why when we're growing up and we're young, we want to be like other people. I, we can't be like other people. It's, I, I'm me, I'm who I am, and you need to be who you are so that you're whole and authentic and then you show up. And then I guess in your world, there's so much, there's so many filters, there's so much fakeness. It's just like, no, you know, you should even go on a date without makeup, without it, just looking for that. Let us see who you really are, you know? Just so, because first we begin to compete. It's really crazy with ourselves. We compete with ourselves. Then we're competing with everyone else around us, just as individuals. Then now enter competition for marriage. We're crazy. No way. So I think that's one of the most, pro I, Eric and Sandra have been absolutely amazing. They've said the most amazing things, which I know they mean from their heart. But competition is the worst thing ever. You can't, you will never win. There'll always be somebody who's more beautiful because they've been born every minute. Let's say even it's about beauty. They, they, they haven't even been born. Some have not, they are still coming, you know? So there will always be people who, and I don't even know who taught us that, who are, who are more beautiful. You are beautiful. The Bible says you are beautifully and wonderfully made. Yeah. So you are unique. You are beautiful in your own way. So you have to stop comp competition, stop comparing, because also co com comparison comes with competition. So you're competing, then you're comparing, then you are like, then you're giving each other pressure or you're giving your spouse pressure. Hey, it's too much. Even you're giving yourself pressure. You need to relax. You need to relax. You need to live life in your authentic self, in your authentic expression, but also with values so that you're not going around annoying everyone. So, or say, this is just the way I am. But being authentic in your expression, authentic in your values, but being comfortable in who you are and being comfortable in then how you relate. But vision is very important. So I think there were a thousand questions there. Thank you. Thank you for the PhD questions. I think from each question, we can write a book, a free ebook on each question kit. That's what you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much, um, Apeft, Angie, um, Sandra, and Eric. I think um, I think I, I love the flow because um, my last question was, you know, and you've touched on it, Apeft, Angie, is this, we live um, in this era of technology and social media. There's so much um, fakeness and it seems like we are winning you know couple goals hashtag couple goals nini but the truth is they're not showing us you know what is on the ground when they are arguing and all that so i just um wanted you um to close off with how does winning in this um age of social media how can we just be able to you know win in terms of not not um, looking at all these social media pressures, G or couple goals, what, but how can, uh, what, what advice will you give us as young people? Um, I know the times when you guys are dating are so different from now. So, um, and I'm so sure you've seen some of the things that, you know, um, are happening right now in social media. We've had cases of, you know, um, people, um, dating meeting online and you know um someone goes to meet the other person and the person is killed so how can we safeguard ourselves guard ourselves um even when you know we are we are we are we are meeting people online when we are meeting people on social media um what would your advice be and yeah and like your parting shots 
So first of all, me, let me start so I give them time to respond. And then remember, there are two or three questions on the chat that they haven't answered yet. Mm. We have like 15 minutes, but they need to, I think, answer those questions yeah. so that we address our audience. But one of the things I'd say because of social media and sometimes this online dating, which can be dangerous, um, I think it's happened a lot in the West as well. So I think one thing you have to tell somebody, we each need a, somebody to hold us accountable. So you need to say, this is where I'm going and I'm going with this person. And even possible, I mean, I was amazed to see, I don't know why I remembered somebody, something I was watching and they said, you know, um, you can be having a date here and the person, your friend is sitting at another table, you know, so that you don't emit, don't trust too much, you see, because I think that there's this over trust. I think they've been very great, um, relationships that have come out of online dating because also that's the way people meet you know there's some communities and places that people live that there's no other way they, they're, they're gonna meet yeah that's the way they're gonna meet so it's great testimonies have come out of that but also they've been dangerous things so just say tell somebody all this secrecy and, sh and shrouding everything in secrecy is not good just tell somebody and even if possible they could they could go with you but sit somewhere different and just watch you and then you can go home um and then there's something there's something i wanted to share but i don't know why it's oh and then when i've seen the some socialites if i could call them at all or social media influencers i've actually seen they're very careful about their social media what they what they post um, some don't even follow each other, yet they are both um, very serious influencers. And then there's a limit limit to what they show and what they present on social media. You cannot, I don't think you can present everything on social media, neither should you be, because now that comes to, are, are you competing? Are you comparing? Who are you trying to prove a point to? So even when you want to post something, I think you need to just sit about it, maybe even relax, wait for two or three days, and then keep asking yourself, do I need to post this? And even ask yourself the motive. Why am I posting this? What is the motivation behind this? I think that's very important. So that's what I would say. Oh, wow. Hi. <laughs> uh, Sandra, Eric, please. <laughs> Sandra, you need an uh, anointing service after this one. What? <laughs> Sandra. <laughs> so to be very fair, I'm jumping on to to what uh, Postlangi has said about, especially about why are you posting, you know? So I'm, uh, we, and, and this goes to what Eric was saying about how we can be different about our values. So we, we, we both love God, we both have the same values, but for me, myself, I'm not big on social media. Um, our first uh, social media was uh, Facebook uh, in the late uh, 2000s. And now, I mean, I have an Instagram account as well, but my personal thing has been, I don't post my life on social media because a lot of people, um, and, and just to encourage you guys, it's not just young people who are, who are living fake. Even people who are our age or older than us are living fake. You know the truth. You know the truth that, that mm -hmm. what is going on. But somebody is just posting their, I don't know, it's th that why, W-H-Y is such an important question that you need to ask yourself. So for me, you know, I, I don't post because I'm living for the audience of one who's God and my spouse. So if my spouse is happy and we, we are in that, I don't have to show everybody uh, how I'm having, how much fun I'm having. So I, I, I think what Apostolangi has said is so spot on that don't put everything of your life on social media. I think um, the, the, the danger has been that even people can find you and kill you. And I mean, because the world we live in has now become crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and don't also, don't believe everything you see. And because it's not a competition. Remember, we are, we are not competing with other people. Um, I posted uh, Philippians 2.3. That the competition, the exam that Sandra has is different from the exam Katie has, that the exam Apostolangi has. So me, if I want to check myself, let me go to the word. Let me go to the person who made me. Let me not go to social media and start to scroll on, on Katie's feed to see Katie went for a date and me, I haven't gone on a date. And now create a domain from there. Yeah. Mm. So social media, like Apept has said, is, is a fantastic tool. You guys um, are living very exciting times, but it needs a lot of wisdom. And that is where I end it. But the why, in fact, I'll even post it. That why, why are you posting? 
that TikTok, you, why? Is it to help other people? Or is it to show the people who are saying that you're not cool that now, look at me now. Yeah, see, I'm at only seven, you are, you are, you are told me to go Galimazu. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, thank you so much, Sandra. Eric? Uh, me, I can talk forever, but... Uh, Keep it short. <laughs> Between uh, uh, Solange and Sandra, I think the, the card within uh, pertaining to social media, it's a great tool. It's a fantastic tool. You guys should use it as much as you can, but understand that it has its limitations, its problems. Um, so keep what is private private, uh, and keep. You know, I always I always wonder personally why why would I post a picture on a date? This. It doesn't make sense. If you're having a good time, then have your good time. You can post about it later or for, for a reason. But are you posting it to post? That why is a big question. So we don't place, yes, we can people and people are doing all sorts of things, but we are part of that. So we are also posting. So let's evaluate why we post. Is it to show off? Is it to, like Sandra said, to show it to the people who said you couldn't make it? And, and just address the why. And then from there, you'll be able to see here, we can post this, we can't post. Uh, even one simple example is that we, we stopped posting pictures of our children. And there's a time we used to post a lot and we just one day deleted all the pictures and we just don't do it at all. And there's a spiritual reason for that. And also there's just a common sense reason for that. Why, why should we show people our children? If you mm -hmm. want to see them come to our home, they're here. Mm. <laughs> uh, and just be, uh, be private. If you, if you see a lot of the very, some of the very successful influencers, they'll post about the content that they make, but they don't post their, you'll never see their home. You never see their car. Even look at someone like Yashinsky, where does he live? What car does he drive? You will never see that. You will not know, he, you don't see his personal life at all. And yet he's on social media. Just an example. I, I know there are many better examples, but they keep their private lives, their content out there. So use the tool for the content, but keep your lives private and enjoy your life with the people that are around you, the people who matter. Because real relationships, yes, there's, there's online relationships, there's distance relationships. You guys can interact with people all over the world. But still the place of the physical relationship, the, the, the way that God has made it. And just operate on a day-to-day -day basis. Holy Spirit will show you um, and, and you can do the, the, the best of it. Thank you. And don't believe everything. There's a lot of lies on social media. People are living fake lives and not just young people, even the older people, even grandparent age people. People are competing with my children have done better. You know, there'll always be another competition about something. So don't believe everything that is there. Yeah. It's not unique to young people. It's across, it's across everyone. So let's, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Amazing time. Um, Angie. <laughs> I wanted to say also, we've just done a series on just Angie, which should be airing soon uh, with Pauline Kiraide on owning your career. And she said also because of social media that your when people are hiring people now, they go to your feed uh, because your feed will tell them the truth. Your, your, your CV can say this, hmm. but going to your feed, thank God Instagram stories disappear because, hey, yeah, but they go <laughs> to know the real you mm. so for me it's something that we have to think about so we've done a series i think it should be airing soon on just angie with the polycurate and althea and um, on hr because about only your career because you see you're young right mm. now you you think people if and it's the fact that if somebody if i come today I say oh my name is Angie morenga the first thing they'll do is go and google me that's the first thing they'll do they'll go to see my social media footprint but the, the dangerous thing or the thing that we need to watch out for is so are employers. Employers, people who are giving scholarships, mm. apparently people who are not getting scholarships, you, you qualify in everything for the scholarship, then they go to your social media pages and you are disqualified. So let's be careful what we are posting. And again, the why. It's not necessary to tell the world. Every time I see a person post a picture of a child, I start praying. I'm like, why are these people posting the picture? Post the experience. Mm. Yeah, that's why it's just for photo their food or the ambience of the place. But stop posting you. Stop putting yourself there. Stop putting your family there. Stop putting yourself out there. We don't need to. And it's funny that 
I hope we're, we're okay to say this, but the art, I, I was actually talking about Yashinsky and Zia, that they don't, they don't even follow each other on social media. They are not each other's friends. Everyone is doing their own thing, but they do not post anything about their personal lives. So we've got to be very careful. So look at, at the influencers, even them see how they are living, and even you, yeah, you better align and start living like not everybody has to know your business. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, we apologize, we have gone way past time, but my goodness, um, we will not have it any other way. Um, I believe the Holy Spirit has really, really, you know, flowed with us. Um, there are just a couple of, I guess, three questions. Um, we can just take one minute, please. Um, so the first question, maybe we'll go to Eric and then the second one, Sandra, Ivo. So the first one is um, Eric, um, Josiah is asking, as a young man, at what point did you discern um, that you needed to either distance or separate yourself from the people who are around you? Uh, maybe just to repeat, as a young man, at what point did you discern um, that you needed to either distance or separate yourself from the people who are around you? Uh, excellent question. Uh, and, uh, what I can say is that the, the, there's a point where it reaches and you, you realize that this relationship is more problems than benefit. If you're, you're always with your pal and then you're always getting arrested, or getting in trouble or it always ends badly that is already a sign and it happened it happens and i can tell you with uh, honesty sandra knows the truth that a lot of my childhood friends now are junkies they're actually junkies these are people who cannot function without drugs and yet we started we were all young together we were all you know we started from the same position but because of choosing different paths and i'm not saying that i'm better than anyone else but once you discern that this person, my, my principles with this person are different, that is the time to leave because it will end in disaster. So just pray, Josiah, everyone just pray. Holy Spirit will show you that this is not the person you should be staying with. And it will come from simple things that you see that there's a lot of conflict, there's a lot of conflict. And then once you realize, don't ignore, just take the decision. Remember your destiny is at stake. Don't put it at stake because of pleasing someone else or, or, or being afraid of offending someone else. What is at stake is so much bigger than that. You rather save that relationship and then keep your destiny intact. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Eric. Um, Josiah, I hope Eric has answered your question. Um, yeah. Then um, to Sandra, um, I think um, uh, I saw another question by... I think I've lost it. Oh, so um, I think it's Chelsea. She's asking, how do you relate or be around people without letting them influence you wrongly? How do you relate or be around people without letting them influence you wrongly? Oh, Chelsea, thank you so much for asking. And, and I think that's a question that um, you'll be interested to know that many people are still asking. And, and even people who are 80 years old are still asking. But I think it really comes to the discussion we had earlier about your identity. So mm -hmm. when you know who you are in Christ and um, that, that he put you on this earth for a specific purpose, I think it's Ephesians 2.10 and I'll be able to post that on the chat as well, then you will not allow somebody to convince you that if you smoke a cigarette, you'll be cool. Because you, you know that you know that you know that God has called you for a higher purpose. And I know sometimes it's difficult because you know you want to be with a couple with these friends that you, you enjoy their company and so on. But then the cost of you being part of that group is so high, they're asking you to, to do things that are so contrary. Um, and I would say also talk to somebody about it. So if you have an aunt or, a, or, or you can talk to your parents, just you know, share whatever it is that, that you feel you're being influenced to do. And, and sometimes the, the advice would be different based on what it is. Sometimes somebody is telling you, uh, let's skip school and, um, and go and, and walk around at the mall. And you, you know it's not a good idea. 
but because you want to be part of it, then you, you think it's just the one time. The challenge then becomes that it will be the one, two, three, four, fourth time, fifth time, yeah? So um, invest time in your relationship with God and then talk to someone. Okay, thank you, um, Sandra. Um, Chelsea, I hope Sandra has answered your question. Um, so the last one to you, Eric, is how do you deal with having been hurt in a previous relationship, uh, platonic, and now having new friendships, sometimes struggling to trust them as much as you did um, before? Okay, um, thank you for that question, uh, Anna. That, that is something that we all experience. And I think we even talked earlier that mm -hmm. disappointment um, is part of life because we are all flawed. It's more painful when it comes from somebody who you trusted, from someone who um, you didn't expect it from, you know, and that's why it feels more painful. But just be encouraged that um, there is healing in, in Jesus. There is healing in Christ. Je Jesus himself was rejected everywhere he went. You know, he was celebrated in many places, but even in his own hometown, he was rejected. And I'm sure being man, he must have also felt hurt. But there's also things like you mentioned now, you're, you're in a relationship with someone. Uh, it was a platonic relationship. But the one thing that you need to do is that um, we, we talked about it. You have to get help to get over that situation so that it doesn't affect your future, um, the future relationships. So one of the things would be to talk to someone, talk to a counselor or someone, a pastor, a youth pastor, an older sibling, a parent, someone who you trust, and they can help you to walk through. Even here in this community, you can get a lot of help. You can connect, you can reach out to any anyone here, and they can help you get over the heart. It's a good thing that you notice it's a problem because then you can start to address it uh, so that the sooner it can be addressed, then it doesn't spill over into your relationships and it doesn't contaminate uh, what is it that God has in store for you. And also pray, 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 pray. Go and open the Bible, go to Google and say, which are the verses that deal with, with healing? And pray them over yourself. Pray them over the circumstance, and I can tell you it will, it will work. God will come and lift that heaviness, and it will just go. One day you will wake up and it will not be there. Because some of these things are, are, are heavy. They are go beyond human intervention. Only God can deal with some of these things. There's people who have, been, have gotten such, they've been hurt in ways that you can never imagine. But prayer and, and, and seeking God and also talking to someone um, will, will help. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. Um, it's been an amazing session. My goodness, I, I, I can't even thank you enough. Eric, Sandra, Apeft, Angie, thank you for, you know, um, joining in and, you know, sharing um, and pouring out to us. We are really honored. Um, we've learned so much. We, we are really privileged. So thank you so much, Eric and Sandra. We appreciate you. We love you. Um, God bless you. Um, yeah, so thank you, thank you so much. You can stay as we just wrap up. Yeah, um, but guys, this next session, we'll just like to maybe have one or two key takeouts um, and learnings, you know, just share with us what have you learned um, from everything that, you know, we've, we've, we've discussed today. So maybe I could um, ask, oh, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Um, do you mind sharing uh, maybe what you've learned? Um, have you enjoyed the session? Yes. Welcome, Hannah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> wow. Um, first of all, this has been an amazing, amazing meeting, if I can say it like that. Uh, thank you, Joy, for inviting me. Um, I'm really thankful that I actually joined. Sometimes at some point I was contemplating, but I said, you know, let me just come. I've learned a lot. I don't know how many pages I've written, but there's been a lot. I think uh, one of the things I picked out is I need to be that person that I would like to have as a friend. I think that one for me is a very one that has stood out to me personally. Um, and the second one, I would say that it's important to always make sure that I have my values and stand up for my values so that uh, I'm able to choose which friends are correct for my life 
and understanding that friendships are very important where God wants to take me. Uh, those are the three things that really stood out to me and have really answered some questions and have really impacted the way I've, I see a couple of things personally right now. So I'm very grateful for that. Thank you so, so much. I definitely will be here for the next one. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Thank you so much um, for sharing. Um, really um, appreciate you for joining us. Um, thank you for you know, in, um, honoring the invitation that Jay gave you. Yeah, so we are glad that you learned so much. You've written notes. Ah, that is amazing. So thank you so much, Hannah. And Karibu Tena to the next one. You're most welcome. Um, maybe just one more. Um, I can see here Michael. So Michael, um, Karibu, would you like to maybe share one or two key takeouts? Hi, Michael, representing the gentleman in the house. Are you able to speak? Oh, I've learned something very oh. Are you speaking? Oh, I've learned that you should speak friends you can trust and ones you can know. Uh -huh really shows like they're the type of people you can trust and yeah that's basically it well sorry i think we didn't hear you clearly uh, maybe you can write it on the chat section all right okay um, thank you. Um, maybe just one more. Um, I can see Chilande Kitui. Chilande, do you mind sharing um, maybe a few of your takeouts, please? I've learned that there's friends for a season, friends for a reason, and friends for a lifetime, and that mm -hmm. you should be the type of friend you want. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was so spot on and direct. Um, that is a tweetable, you know, <laughs> tweetable quote. Um, friends for a season, friends for a reason, and friends for a life. And thank you, um, Chilande. Yeah, so um, thank you so much, guys, for, um, you know, having us. Um, Angie, maybe if you would say a thing or two before I say, like, the vote of thanks. Wow, I think we needed to go. But I was going to say, maybe everybody could type into the chat, maybe a takeout that you have so that we get everybody's feedback. I could mm -hmm. just leave a minute, just, just chat what you, just tell us what you learned. For me, win winning is not competition, is what um, has really stood out for me today. So just chat, just type in the chat. Let's see what comes up in the chat so that I can pray. Um, I think maybe I can share mine as people are writing, okay. um, is that really relationships can be a blessing or a curse, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that is so big, you know, it's, it's a big statement. Um, and, and it means that um, we, we really get to choose, you see, like how there's a Bible verse that says um, uh, life and death is um is in the time you know so it's it's basically like that that in relationships whoever you choose to be in your life um you know it really makes um a big difference and it's we are really tasks uh tasked to to make the right choices and i think the good thing is that we have the holy spirit um to guide us on who to have in our lives and who not to have in our lives so that for me was like my biggest biggest take out yeah Oh, wow, I can see people writing. Mm, so maybe I could read them out. So Michael says, having a relationship with friends you can trust shows that you're part of a good crowd and you should stay there. Very powerful. Karen says, iron sharpens iron. Amazing. Josiah, you must have a healthy relationship with yourself before any other relationships prosper. Very powerful. Mary Nazali, the way to win is not to compete and not to compare. Hannah, be the friend that I want to have. Chilanda, 
Ochilande. There's friends for a season, friends for a reason, and friends for a lifetime. Chelsea, every purposeful relationship takes work and growth, and Christ is the best foundation. Abby, God did not didn't create us to compete with others and to compare ourselves. So that's really powerful. We're so grateful that, that the, this has really ministered to you. I'm so grateful that you attended because, let me see, Sharon says, any relationships has its touch. Huh? Any relationship has its challenges, work through it and involve God. So, you know, it's just, it's so, it's so powerful to hear this because I know something has happened, something has shifted, you know, uh, because like we said, we didn't get this. Yeah. So we're so grateful that you have, that you have gotten this and that um, may this be a turning around, may it bring it, may you br bring you to seasons of good things. Because for me, I think I wrote in the chat earlier, I had the wrong relationships and it really, it really messed up my life. It really slowed down so many things. And you know, even Eric said, many of the people now are junkies. Many of the people are losers. They've not succeeded in anything. Many of them, I see the frustration. I wish they could go back and be serious that they just got into the wrong company, got into the wrong, and their lives are completely messed up. Their, their peers are driving cars. You know, I mean, driving cars, they have beautiful houses, homes, families. We're not saying that, that if you don't, it's wrong, but it's so sad to see sometimes the emptiness of just wrong decisions and especially relationships wrong just the wrong relationship causes the rest of your life to be miserable and sometimes i think there's a limitation of seeing today depending on how old you are whether you're 17 18 20, 20 you're seeing today but you're not seeing tomorrow and imagine that i was reflecting and saying i feel so sad that when i see them because you know you're so ashamed when you see your peers your peers are ahead of you that if only somebody had just said one word to them that would help them understand, look, this thing is real. You know, like being in school is real. Being, doing well in school is, is, is going to affect your future. Doing well in, in university or campus or college, or even if you go to work with your hands, you know, it's so important how you do it because it's going to impact your future. It's going to impact where you live, how you work, how you play, what you're able to afford, the kind of lifestyle that you want. It's gonna affect it. And, and unfortunately, for some reason, we don't take it seriously. If I get in, 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 in a crowd the other day, somebody was telling me about people who are in jail together, they are friends, but they're in jail. And now they've been jailed for life. That's just friendship. That's the wrong friends. Now they're in jail. And you, you can imagine being in an African jail or a Kenyan jail. It's great. That is, that is you can't even imagine the depth of torture that is. Just because of hanging around with the wrong crowd. So you have to be winning in relationships I love all your takeouts, but even after this, you need to sit and ask yourself, who am I? Mm. What do I stand for? Can I see my future? Because they say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Do you want to be one of those people who regrets the choices they made wherever you are in life now? rather than sowing a seed for your future. Be very serious. I'm telling you the truth. You know, you wonder, I think sometimes I also wonder, maybe I'm speaking too much, but you know, our parents sometimes, it's like they didn't tell us. I feel like you, they didn't tell us. They didn't say, start, they, could, they could ask us it was being beaten and everything, but they didn't tell us that it was important to get good grades, that your grades were going to affect you the rest of your life. They didn't tell us it was important to get a university education. They didn't say why. And it doesn't matter if you're not academically gifted, it's okay. This, you have a gift. So whether it is in creativity, but I'm here to tell you today with my 55 years, you have to take it seriously because it's going to affect you. Mm. It's going to affect you when your friend lives in a nice three bedroom house with a nice compound and you cannot afford a servant's quarter. It's going to affect you. Let me tell you what my parents didn't tell me. It's going to affect you. When you're standing at the bus stop and they drive by in cars, it's going to affect you. So at that moment, because that's what was making me look back, I was looking at some of my friends and people and relatives and family. It's so sad. They can't go back and turn back the time. But we're trying to turn it back. We were trying to say, don't go down that route. Don't go down that route. Because you can see today, there's 20 years from today. Mm. 20 years from today, what you're doing now is going to affect you positively or negatively. Mm. 
the choices you make now. So you have to think through them. You can't just be somebody who does things just to do. No, what are my values? What are my thoughts? What's my vision? Even if it looks like it's, I don't say the word laughable. What's my vision? It's mine. What's your vision? What do you want out of life? And then come and work backwards. Because this is what I want in life. Where do, how do I get there? I don't know why I keep feeling in my spirit. Like, and I think it's something happens. Every parent, every child was to do better than their parents. They're like, ah, oh, these guys didn't get it together. Yeah, we're very critical of what they, <laughs> what they couldn't do for us. Nah, 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 I must do. Okay, fine. Then make a plan. You better make a plan. You better have a vision. You better choose the right friends. You better watch that series I'm telling you that Pauline has done. You better watch it because it's, I mean, I can't explain to you the, th the, the nuggets that she dropped on us. Nuggets on how to navigate relationship, works, um, owning your career, how to be the best at what you are, how to get ahead. Yeah. I have talked a lot. I hope you have heard me. Say, um, first tell me if you have heard me. Thank you. Our values determine our relationships. Is, is everybody in agreement? Show me something. Tell me something that shows that uh, I've said something that means something to you and that is going to help you out. Yeah, Michael. We yeah. have heard you. Yeah, I hope you have heard me. I could just, yeah, I could car. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you, Pastor Angie, Eric, and Mo Eric and, and Sandra Mwangi and KBSU team for an awesome and reaching event. Yeah, thank you so much. I concur. Because I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you things that we were not told. We were not told those things. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. We were not told them. They just told us to do good in school, but they didn't tell us that our life was going to be a mess if we didn't. They didn't say that. It would have been more serious then. But I'm telling you to be extremely careful in what you do and be very deliberate in what you have and the opportunities that you have. So I don't know. Do you want to do the vote of facts? Then I pray because we're keeping yes. it. Then when yes. I pray. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, I, I can't even um, begin to express, you know, my gratitude um, to, first of all, God. Um, it wouldn't have been possible. Um, you know, without God um, giving us life, giving us an amazing platform. Um, and so I just want to give glory and all the praise and honor to God. Um, yeah, for really making this possible. And then thank you, Apept Angie, um, my goodness. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for believing in uh, the vision that, you know, um, was birthed through Aisha. And then now, you know, we are continuing to execute it. Thank you for KBS um, platform. Thank you for PLF. Thank you so much because, you know, you, you help us to execute this um, by really, you know, do your thing. Um, and really that's the challenge, but also that's how we grow. So thank you. Thank you, Apep Angie. We love you. We pray for you. Um, and we pray that, you know, um, that God continues to um, bless you all the more. Um, thank you to our amazing guests, uh, Sandra and Eric. Wow. Um, yes, that one is for Shango and Vigele Gele. Um, God has really, really spoken through you. Um, we've been challenged, we've been encouraged, we've been, um, you know, um, I can say um, just we've learned so much. Um, and I pray that God, um, from the same cup that you have poured out, that he continues to fill you guys up. Uh, may he continue to bless your family, your children, your marriage, that you may continue to win yeah, in your relationship um, and in your families and even in your friendships. So we love you guys and thank you for really coming through um, and God bless you. Thank you to our amazing, um, I can say KBS youth family, um, Kenya in absentia, you know, um, Apostle George, just the entire team. Thank you for um, holding our hands. Um, I know most of them are not here, but we thank, we thank them in absentia. We thank the entire Marketplace Ex Ecclesia Accelerator for upholding us in prayer, you know, interceding for us. And to you, our amazing guests, you are our guest of honors. So we thank you. It wouldn't have been possible. Um, 
um, you know, this event to happen, but we thank you for joining us in the morning on a Saturday. Um, you know, we, we are really honored and we pray that um, they, there's going to be like amazing transformation in your relationships, in your lives, you know, just in everything that you're going to win. And we know that God as we've really experienced God. And so thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Joy, my amazing partner. <laughs> yeah, Joy, thank you. Um, thank you for amazing emceeing. Um, thank you for, you know, just um, doing this together. It's really um, amazing working with you. And I appreciate you. I love you. And God bless you. Yeah, so... We are going to close up with a word of prayer. So, Angie Karibu. Amen. Amen. And I'm so grateful for all the comments. Honestly, this is so good. I'm so grateful. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to ask you that you bless us. Bless the youth that are on this platform. Bless the youth that will watch it on um, the YouTube and the Facebook pages of Kingdom Business Solutions. Thank you for us, even who are older. But we all needed this, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for Eric and Sandra. They have delivered, Father. They have poured out. It was authentic. It was beautiful. Thank you for all our participants, Father. Please change our lives. Transform our lives. There's a reason we came here today. And so, Lord, I pray that the trajectory of our lives would change, that we would make the right choices, make the right steps, even understand the why behind our decisions, you know. I think there are many things that we are asked to do as youth, but we don't understand the why. But I think today has given us an understanding of the why, and the why is important. So I pray that you surround us with the right people, the right relationships, the right content, to understand the seasons of relationships, and to be ushered into all that God has ordained, and to understand that we are sowing a seed for our future with every action that we take. We ask you, Father, to help us because without you, we cannot do it. Without the reliance of the Holy Spirit, we are not able to do it. So I ask that you order our steps. I pray that even you give us a time to sit down and to just imagine who am I? You know, describe ourselves, you know, write your bio, um, write your values. You know, what do I value? What do I stand for? So that it helps us to navigate in the relationships on, of life, but the choices that we make and how we engage life. We honor you greatly and bless you greatly for the opportunity to be here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you guys for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for staying until the end. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Do you have oh. a gift? Thank you. Yeah. So guys. We have come to the end of the event today. I thank you all so much for joining. Yeah, so please stay tuned to, I mean, yeah, just wait for the information that will be sent out for the next ABS Youth event. Uh, I know what God has in store for us is amazing and it's always explosive and all. And also, you know, I you know, I don't know what God has for us, but I know what it is, what it is that He has for us is really great. So guys, thank you and have a lovely day. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. Things come to my mind. Aye, aye. Like, how could a man lay down his life just to save mine? Aye, aye. Who would have thought that, that the Messiah would lay down his life on the line just to save mankind? Aye. You came and you changed my life. You came and you made me smile. You came and you brightened my heart. Brighten my whole life, my whole life. You in my life makes me alive. You in my life makes me alive. Oh yeah. You give me love, I can't deny. 
everything sweet like fire You in my life makes me alive You in my life makes me alive, oh yeah You give me love, I can't deny Your love is sweet, I can't lie Makes me alive. You in my life makes me alive, oh yeah. You give me love, I can't deny. Your love is sweet, I can't lie, oh yeah. You in my life makes me alive. You in my life makes me alive, oh yeah. You give me love, I can't deny. Your love is sweet, I can't lie. Oh, yeah.